What's up guys, Steven Docs here. So today I'm going to do a video that's a little bit different than before and the structures will be mainly focused on statistics. <laughs> really? <laughs> you have to pop in this part. <laughs> what the f***? What's up guys, Steven Docs here. So today's video is going to be a little bit different uh, than before and the overall structure will be mainly focused on statistics. And a lot of people are really confused about what I'm saying and there's no real image about what I'm tracking and how I'm tracking and how I'm be able to figure out different patterns and develop different strategies overall. So today I'm going to give you a very slow and very detailed uh, overall tracking sheets. Hopefully uh, you can enjoy watching this and uh, while we're in quarantine, so other than playing video games and getting salty, let's get into the video. So before I start this video, this statistic sheets is coming from my students and I taught him a bunch of tracking basics. And uh, right here, I'm going to give you some of the stuff he did really good, some of the stuff he has to improve and something that he did wrong. So overall, uh, make sure to take this as a learning experience and it's going to be a really good experience for you as a beginner. And especially when you're trying to develop your own strategies going long or short, since we're in this coronavirus pandemic and there's going to be a lot of volatilities and potential opportunities for you to be able to take advantage on. And let's get into the sheets and see what we can do now. And let's get into the sheets and see what we can find out. So while you are looking at these sheets, first of all, as I said, date taker and press in, press out. Those are simulations. Those are not accurate performances for you. You have to keep a separate sheets for yourself that when you are placed this type of trades, and your press in and press out are completely different from the perfect press in and press out. So in the future, we are looking at the ideal press in, press out, and you can figure out there's a way to improve your entry and exit overall. So the press in and press out simulations, they tickers has to be very accurate. And uh, in the future, once you have two different sheets, you can compare with each other to figure out what you did wrong, what you did right, what you can do to improve your entry and exit overall. So the next thing you want to track will be profit loss. So profit loss is how much you're supposed to lose when the stock goes off your risk level. With the parentheses, that means how much you already lost. With the positive ones, how much you gained. And profit loss percentages is how much you lost based on the overall positions. So daily volume also has to be tracked as well. Daily volume are very important, especially to tell the stock is crowded or not, and also how many times the flow rotate. Flow rotation, are very different compared to what we used to experience. Uh, flow rotation is basically that how much volume is trading on the day. For example, 10 mini share traded for the day, and we have overall two mini shares in the flow. So 10 divided by two, five times flow rotations. So that's very simple math. And uh, you can pretty much do all the flow rotations for all, pretty much all tickers. Now, flow rotation typically happens on lower flows because Lower floats generally have lower supplies and if they're trading a tons of volume, they're, they tend to rotate a lot of times. And that's where you have to pay attention to. I will, I will get into that later and let's move forward into the next couple categories. So market cap are very accurate. You have to track, go into the SEC filings or Finviz or Yahoo Finance. Uh, those are the three uh, websites you can get the accurate flow and cap. So flow categories is something that I place for myself. Zero to two millions considered to be micro flow or nano flow. Two to five millions considered to be low flow. Two to three million will be a little bit weird between that gap of micro flow and nano flow. Uh, once we go above five million, it's you know, considered to be low flow. Once we go over 10 million, it's not a low flow anymore. You can see right here between one to 2.9 million. Those are micro floats. Now greater than 10 million right here, those are not low floats. So as you can see my student, um, you can see the date, ticker, press in, press out, profit loss, profit loss percentages, daily volume, market cap, market cap categories. All these type of columns has to be separated into a different sheet. You have to list them very specific. You want to separate all of the tickers that is all greater than 10 million flow you want to put them in one sheet. Then all of the ticker that is around one to two million flow, put them in another sheet. Between three to 10 million, put in another sheet. So overall you will have uh, three sheets together. Once you track about 100 tickers for each sheet, you will be able to track what's the maximum squeezing percentage when the stock meets certain criteria because they're all in the same flow zones. So their actions are very similar when they're beating the same criteria. That's how you'll be able to read 
uh, the price actions. And a lot of people are asking, well, stock is not predictable. In this case, it's predictable because once you split them into very detailed categories and they have very similar conditions, similar market cap, similar float, and similar price actions, and you will be able to tell what's going to happen in the next few hours. That's the overall statistics sheets you have to begin with. For more detailed strategies, I wouldn't really recommend for beginners. If you wanna start somewhere, and this is where you should start, uh, you should follow with the date, keep tracking for all of the tickers that is over 20%, have some type of strategy in there, or it's doing some repeatable uh, actions that you see when the market's open. And once you put all those tickers, you can find similarities. If you don't, and you just disregard all those tickers. And after you track about six months, you will find something that you could take advantage of, especially in morning spike, morning panic. Most of the pattern happens in the morning, of course, between 9 to 11. As I said, being a part-time trader will be the best way for you, especially when you're a beginner. And we're seeing so much actions during the day and you want to overtrade, you want to make money, and that's where FOMO gets to you. So 9 to 11 are the best time to trade. If you wanna still wanna trade, uh, turn off the platforms and start working on your sheets. To be able to grow a small account, you need a simulation. So you wanna know what's going to happen in the next year or two. So you will be able to prepare for that before it happens. So in here, I'm going to give you a decent simulations and also, uh, the calculation of how fast you can grow your account within certain time and certain month to see if you can meet the expectations or not. So let's get into the sheets again. And calculation for bounce short, gap up short first, right? Those are all my patterns. So if you want to learn, there's too much to, to explain. It's too fast. I know, and there's, uh, there's the car behind me. <laughs> uh, bounce short, calculations for bounce short, gap up short, or first red day. Those are all my patterns. So if you wanna get into these patterns, and there's too much to explain, and let's get into the profit calculations. So profit calculations is something that I built for myself, and I will put my patterns into different categories. So when I'm seeing a bounce short or a gap up short or first red day, individual patterns have its own individual winning percentages. Now for winning percentages over 80% or 90%, uh, extremely high, we can place them into category one. Now follow with the lower winning percentage categories will be first red day, overseeing gap down, follow with that will be gap up short without resistance. Basically category one will have the highest winning percentage. Category two will be around, I would say 70 to 80%. Category one will be definitely 80% plus or 90% plus. Category three will be 65 to 70. Category four will be 55 to 60. Once you list all those categories, you want to really maximize your profits. For the higher winning percentage pattern, as in category one, I want to place more shares or maybe put more money down because it has much higher winning percentage. So I will be able to maximize my reward. Category two, same thing. I want to put less money compared to category one because it has less winning percentage. So in this case, I will be able to maximize my reward and minimize my losses. So once we have that, we want to decide how much money we want to put into category one, two, three, four. And this is the simulations that we have. So the account size will based around 5,500. And I want to, since you have a small account and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So for a smaller account, if you're so free to lose, and since you don't really have that many chance for screwing up, I would highly recommend only focus on category one and category two. Next thing you want to do will be tracking the frequency of category one and two within the, during the year. So you want to know how many times this pattern happens per year. Um, let's assume 20 times a year, category two will be 30 times. So overall, you will be trading 50 times a year during 252 trading days. Now, this is where you want to set your risk level. Risk management will become a pretty different story after the data sheets. I will talk about it in the next few videos, but let's get into without risk management. And certainly you should have a maximum loss. Each trade, you should be able to risk $200 or $300 or $500 for over your account size. Once you have your account size, how much dollars you use, what's your profit supposed to be. So you can see with the perfect trades, you can turn about $5,000-ish into $50,000 within 26 trades because 
it's like a snowball. Once you have higher capitals, you will be able to have more money to be able to trade with, and that also increases your profits as well. Without any type of screwing up or FOMO or over trading, you will be able to turn 5,000 to 1 million over in about 100 trades. Now, of course, we're all human. We're not the perfect robots. We'll be able to make mistakes. Sometimes we get bad mood, we over trade. And this is where you have to stay very disciplined. Because you have the simulations, you know the frequency, how many times it happens per year, and you also know what's the risk reward, and you also know how much you're supposed to size in. So once you have the simulations and you have that number in your head, the profit, the risk, how much money you're supposed to put it in, and what's the result is going to come now after a year. Once you have everything, and you will significantly reduce how much you want to trade during the day, especially when you have a FOMO. So overall, the statistics from this student is pretty good. And the only thing he needs to track is he needs to split all those tickers that is in different categories, uh, all of them between 1 to 2.9 of the tickers between three to 10 million, of the tickers above 10 million. Once you track all of that, he needs to track for specific uh, price actions to be able to increase his winning percentages, what's the maximum squeezing percentages, what's the maximum point to take profits from. So this is a broad spreadsheet. Uh, it's not super detailed. The profit calculation is pretty accurate, so I like that. Um, he still had a lot of work to do, but for beginners, this is very sufficient for you guys. Uh, especially when you're just trying to start. So build your sheets first. Let me know if you have any questions. Please leave a comment below and I will get to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, I will see you guys in the next one.